there's a, a thin sand covering over a lot of the tenement and that would have masked these really large potential tin deposits that are out there. So we can use modern exploration techniques such as geophysical surveys and things to start to uncover what, what could be a very large target there and, and is very exciting for Sky to sort of set ourselves up. Not only do we have a, a very um, a safe deposit at, at Talabung that we're developing, but we also look like we've got um, a very, you know, potentially very large deposit on the horizon as well. And Hello and welcome back to the Assay TV. Today I am joined by Oliver Davies, CEO of Sky Metals, an ASX listed company focused on the development and exploration of mineral resources, mainly tin, in Australia. Welcome, Oliver. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's great to have you on the assay with us. Thanks very much. Great to be here. So if we could start with an overview of Sky Metals and its journey so far. Yeah, so Sky Metals listed in 2019. Uh, we listed on a few tin assets that came out of uh, Aurelia Metals. And, um, and since then, we've been working uh, throughout New South Wales and Australia on these tin assets. We've got some gold projects as well. But certainly in the last couple of years, it's really been our, our tin projects with the strength in the tin price that we've really focused on and, and started to deliver. And that's really flagshipped by our, our Talabang tin deposit. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll definitely get into more about the tin and the Talabang project later on. Um, so this week, the company has released a substantial updated MRE at the Talabang project. Could you tell us some of the highlights of that, please? Absolutely, yeah. So we've, we've increased from our maiden resource, we've increased 53%. So it's a, it's a very large addition to the resource that we had there originally. And it's getting us towards the point that we think is a critical mass where we can start mine scoping studies. And, and they're very important for this project because it is a low-grade tin deposit. But it's very important that we talk about how low cost we think it is and, and the margins that we think we're going to be making on tin there. And, and one of the key aspects of that is... Uh, another aspect of, of our announcement this week, which was our Tomra ore sorting results. Um, they've been a real game changer for this project and um, they're, they're working terrifically. They're working better than we expected. And, and in this announcement, we talk about a variability study where we haven't seen any reason why in one area of the deposit or another, these ore sorters wouldn't work, but rather than assume we've proved it and we've gone and taken samples from all across the deposit put them through the Tomra ore sorter and they've averaged a five times increase in grade. So we're taking a 0.15% tin resource, we're taking that up to an over 0.7% tin grade. So for people unfamiliar with tin, that's an, that's over 2% copper. So we're getting a very high grade product out of the Tomra ore sorters. We then do a very cheap gravity separation on it, produce a high payability concentrate. And so in summary, we, at Talabung, we have a, a low cost, open pit resource, so cheap mining, the Tomara upgrade, and then cheap processing to get us a high payability tin concentrate. And, and tin concentrates often see uh, up to 98% payability on Kentucky tin. So a very, very valuable commodity to be producing that, that gets three times um, the value of copper at, at the smelter. All right, that sounds really exciting. And you just briefly mentioned um, that people are unfamiliar with tin. Um, it's a lot of talk about the other critical metals. Um, so could you please tell us more about the role of tin in the current energy transition and how the company can capitalize on that? Absolutely. Tin's become a very vital element in the last couple of decades in particular. In 2003, the EU banned lead in solar because it's toxic. And one of the very key things about tin is that it's non-toxic. So, um, it's also has a very low melting point, so it's terrific as a solder and irreplaceable. Um, and that means that tin is involved in, it's ubiquitous through all technology, mobile phones to internal combustion cars, where there's about half a kilogram of tin in every internal combustion car, and there's even more used in EVs. So tin is, is a very sought after commodity, and because a very small amount of it is used in everything, it, it will never make, uh, the tin price is very inelastic. The tin price could go to um, to $100,000 a tonne and that would be fine. Everyone would keep buying it because you can't replace it with anything. 
and it's not going to overall change the price of a car or anything. So it's a really good commodity to be in from that perspective that uh, there's there's really only upside in the price. It's irreplaceable and it's ubiquitous through all of these um, technologies that are feeding global electrification. Moving on to more news flow that you guys have had. Um, the company has announced drill results from the new Naroya projects, I believe. Um, if you could run through that for us, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we picked up uh, Naraya a little while ago. There's a few old uh, tin mines there. And um, I went and walked around the site there um, probably about six months ago and was really impressed by the extensiveness of the workings. Uh, that hadn't really been communicated in a lot of the old reports. And so we drilled a maiden drill program testing underneath the old workings where historically that, that hadn't been done. And um, we intercepted some strong tin and tungsten, but we also intercepted it all within the granite. And often uh, tin and tungsten are, 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 um, form the largest deposit sort of on the margins of the granite rather than the granite itself. And so now it's important that we work out where the margins of those are. There's a, a thin sand covering over a lot of the tenement, and that would have masked these really large potential tin deposits that are out there. So we can use modern exploration techniques such as geophysical surveys and things to start to uncover what, what could be a very large target there and, and is very exciting for Sky to sort of set ourselves up. Not only do we have a, a very um, a safe deposit at, at Talabung that we're developing, but we also look like we've got um, a very, you know, potentially very large deposit on the horizon as well and, and all in a commodity that, uh, that has a lot of upside and, and hasn't been looked at in a long time. Maybe we could talk, I know that Australia is a very familiar mining jurisdiction with a lot of people and we know a lot about it, but are there any um, advances or things that you think make it unique? Um, very importantly, uh, Australia is a very stable jurisdiction uh, compared yeah. to much of the world. Um, yeah. We have a very skilled workforce um, and, and obviously access to things like a um, secure power supply. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. it's, it's a very stable area to work in. And then we also, um, uh, the, in the state of New South Wales where, where Sky Metals operates, there's been four new mines approved this year. So it's, it's a very active mining jurisdiction. And with a, particularly with this idea of uh, critical minerals and things as well, it's it's um, uh, th there's a lot of force in the government to try and get a lot of these projects off the ground and, and help out uh, companies such as ourselves. Oh, that's great to hear. And then finally, um, could you tell us um, what's on the horizon for Sky Metals and what our investors should look out for from the company? So we've um, we've now increased the resource and, and we're showing, we're sort of delivering on what we told people we would do, which was to start to increase this resource towards a critical mass. There's still a bit more work to do on that. So we need to do a bit more drilling. Uh, we're starting to identify some high grade zones and things that we want to flesh out, which will be particularly important for our first couple of years of mine life. And then um, from there, we, we want to build into um, reaching that critical mass, going into mine feasibility studies, and then that way we, we think that's a very important step so that we can strongly communicate to the market um, how economic we think this, this low-cost operation is going to be and what a good, uh, stable, ethical and reliable source of, of tin it will be. So um, we're really looking forward to getting that done this year and, uh, and it's a really exciting year for Sky to, to build. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for that, Oliver, and thanks so much for joining me today. No, very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.